Hello guys, welcome to the Train Parrot. It's Saturday morning and in this video we're gonna do a quick overview of what happened on the technicals. If you have been missing my videos this week, just a quick overview. And we are also going to catch up on what's going on with the bull flag. In here you can see that the battle is still ongoing on the 4 hour bull flag. I'll show you how the liquidity is progressing overnight into the weekend. Low volume trading, sure. We will look into the CME gap that we could potentially form over this week. Weekend, that's definitely going to help us start visualizing what could be next for Monday and the rest of the week. Of course, this video is going to be slightly shorter. I hope so. And I'm going to put a separate video coming later talking about all coins, total, total two, total three, others in general, how things are progressing for Ethereum and all the coins in general, because you know what is the flow of money, right? Bitcoin. And then it's going to start going back down into the rest of the layers. And you don't want to miss that. Guys, if you like this type of content, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I put out one of these videos. And guys, thanks so much because overall in the two videos we put out yesterday, we made a total of 800 likes combined, which is fantastic. Let's continue this trend. Hopefully this video gets into 400, 500 likes that really helps the channel. And yesterday I was really impressed to see that the interest over time, the searches on Google track here using Google Trends made a spike of over 2x. Just a few days ago we were at 18, 16, even 15 we track. And yesterday, thanks to these bullish moves, the ETFs inflows record, we made it to 38. So I'm gonna refresh now the page and see where we are. We are at 39. So that means that the trend is holding. Sometimes you are at 38 or a very high number and you refresh the day after and you go back to 20s or something because they recalculate based on how you end the day. But we can see that in Indeed, it stayed there and it's even higher. So this is the beginning of something, guys. You can see that in November, we made it to 31 and then we have a retracement back into 22s. This just means one thing. Be prepared for pullbacks along the way. You can see that even in this magnificent area, the best part of the bull market in 2020, we did have retracement and a pullback of interesting time on Bitcoin from 31 to 22 caused volatility to spike up to 18%. This is the area where it happened. So regardless of all these green candles in here, by the end of November, there was a shake off, a single move in two days, roughly of 18% down. So imagine the price breaks out from our pattern and it makes it to 80K. 80K is around here. And then we have a retracement of 18%. That brings the price from 80K back into 65K. So I hope that you understand this. Hopefully before you start thinking of where to place your stop loss in the month of November, because November, no matter how bullish it was four years ago, we still have this move. And I'm not saying it needs to happen in the same way at the same time and with the same magnitude, but this is the way that bull markets perform in its best shape. Look at this. There is a drawdown here of 31%. And when Bitcoin does that, the altcoins shake out all the longs as well. And that's why people tend to say that the big winners in here are the holders. Those guys that just accumulated a lower prices like we did below 60s and we just ride that. We do some swing trading. Of course, we take longs and shorts, but we use all this arsenal of indicators to really spot cherry pick the creme of the creme in terms of ratio between risk to reward. Of course, that's the reason we are all here twice a day talking about Bitcoin. And in the past three days we have record inflows on Bitcoin, 600, 1300 and 300 inflows into spot ETFs. That made this move from early October into today as parabolic as the beginning of the year. And let's go to the important things that we need to look into today, which is where we close the price on Friday. We did close the price at 77.1. Remember that this closing price, the daily candle on CME is more expensive than in other exchanges. So this must be somewhere roughly around 
76.8 or 0.9, sorry, 76.9, 76.8. I don't know what I'm talking about. Indeed, the difference was larger. I can see that the daily close in the dollar index, in the Bitcoin index is 76.5. But let's stick to CME prices. This just means that if over the weekend we go in here, we tend to come back up and close that gap. If during the week we continue going lower, we are going to continue tracking whatever gap we produce over the weekend. How do we define this line in here? That will be the opening price of CME on Monday. And as I said yesterday in two of the videos, the best way to close on a Friday is at the highest price possible. And I wasn't expecting to spend so much long here in the bull flag i was expecting actually to see a breakout somewhere on thursday we already started talking about this pattern pretty much on wednesday if i remember right and here we are it's saturday and this continues to move in this way the only thing i'm still tempted to make a change here but i haven't done it and i have stayed super quiet on this is that we could potentially make a move and make it this way just because it matches perfectly with three lines in there in which case our breakout is at 71 we need less to call for the breakout and i will say if we do that we turn the bullish flag into a more aggressive setup obviously to get into 73 or 74 to confirm the breakout is slightly more so let's say the breakout is between 72 and 74 we can track that today i'm gonna use the reverse rsi included in the subscription and the reason is because it allows me to put multiple values of RSI. I'm going to put 72 to 74 for the breakout area at the top. And at the bottom, I'm going to track 66. Let me double check that. Is it still 66? It's kind of 65.5. Let's leave it at 66. So you can see how our support it's been since Thursday. 66, 67 has been our support. Look at every single week in here. It's incredible. It just one touch, touch touch perfect perfect then there is this candle that was quite scary but then we move back up and we continue to hold every time there no exception until saturday morning so that is our support and our resistance is 77.5 and 78.1 roughly. That is the more conservative, the top breakout. Remember, you need a four hour candle close on top. I'm going to spend the day going around and teaching my daughter how, how to walk. And that's going to take 100% of my attention. So I want to make sure you guys are self-sufficient and you can go ahead and make your own decisions as well based on the information i'm sharing none of this is financial advice this is just guidance and i'm sharing my ideas thoughts feelings but this is just rsi and as i said yesterday yes i'm using loads of indicators but if i was to just use two things i will focus on rsi on multiple time frames the, together with the price action plus the order book that can be trading light or can be trading different they are not the same one is the liquidity pools the liquidation areas stop losses and on this one i get a lot of information there are as many indicators as you will expect on a big platform not as many as trading view but this has the advantage of being able to show you the whole order book the depth and based on that indicators can track that and then give you the delta the open interest the liquidations everything is also very cool so let's see how are we doing with the scalping chart the liquidation pools so if you remember let's go into our telegram by the way i need to remember to mention this the fed the qe breakout no one in crypto is talking about that we are always the first that's why you are subscribed to the channel so yesterday we were tracking the liquidity and i can see that there was the 77 and um, earlier it was looking like this and i can see that we are doing some progress here guys the shorts are convinced that they should be shorting and I, I get where they're coming from because this is rolling over, right? It's producing various divergences and even the algos, the trading bots are starting to short this automatically, which makes sense. But if they don't have access to the order book, they don't see what they are doing to themselves. Because if you're going to short an area like this, you need access to the order book. First of all, we have a heck of a lot of liquidity at the top. We are already in an uptrend. We've been in an uptrend for a day. And yes, there is huge risk on the delta. And today, there is 921,000 in delta from liquidations. These are all these digits that continue to add up in 50, 150x, 25x, all different leverages combined. Can they get away with that? If we enter banana zone, like we have done in 
percent of the time or less in bitcoin history you see walls like this of green or red when you are in a bear market and you're crushing and they just remain like that banana sun is that is indicators order book just going nonsense on 99.9 percent .9 of the time bitcoin will not allow this to stay like this for longer than a few hours or worst case a couple of days market maker will just collapse the price and take this liquidity but we can see that since the 6th of november this just going parabolic and accumulating and i'm not trying to tell you that they won't do it the risk is there it's obvious that the risk is huge but there is a slim chance that potentially the remaining part of next week we enter banana zone very slim chance but it's there for the first time some people say we are already in banana zone i disagree we are not we are not if you think we are in banana zone is because you just enter in Bitcoin for the first time. Banana Sun is this, 8,000%. <laughs> We're not gonna get 8,000% in here ever again. The market cap won't allow that. You can see that this is 8,000, then you get 1,700. We are now 378. So I will say if we go to 100K, we're gonna do 100% more, okay? So these two candles, calling it banana sun is a little bit of an overstatement because even relative to these candles in here where we made a move of almost 200%, it's nothing. This has just moved 24%, guys. You are too new to Bitcoin to think that this is banana sun. I've been there. And when you are there, you're gonna notice by my face because I'm just gonna go completely reckless. But the bull flag and the liquidity in here could start something really big. If we do this in November and we close November very bullish expect a December January completely nonsense you might be thinking because you're watching my videos for a while now or maybe just for one week yeah but you've been saying that we still don't have the four pillars you were saying that the dollar gold the global liquidity index and the fed are in quantitative tightening. so how on earth are we gonna get that if you were actually saying it's almost impossible so the stars are starting to align guys we have the fuel here here. this is the match you know you're gonna make a huge fire and you start with the match this is just to begin incentive for market maker to punish shorts is there so this can bring the price up my worry has been always the same once you run out of this do we have additional fuel coming from something else to bring the price up because bitcoin is not like magic B bitcoin doesn't go up because at this time of the year it goes up that's ridiculous it needs liquidity it needs either the global index to be printing money like crazy because Bitcoin is a hoover of money, and it's gonna suck in all of that, or gold collapsing and a huge amount of flow of cash coming into the market, into the S&P, into Nasdaq, Russell, everything. And then some of that goes into Bitcoin and then Bitcoin rally. Quantitative easing, big major factor as well for Bitcoin to, to run. And overall macroeconomy, global liquidity index too. That's why we are tracking those things and we are starting to see the gold collapsing, not collapsing, but starting to give some early signs of erosion here we're breaking below this if by tomorrow this is still there i think the gold index doesn't update today sorry i don't remember if gold is updated over the weekend in which case we could potentially say the market is closed at least here so as long as there is not a price on futures or whatever but it closed last night and it closed in a breakdown so on sunday in theory we should start claiming that gold has topped out on the contrarian dollar closed with a breakout to the upside how long this is is going to rally after this i don't know but i know that bitcoin doesn't like to rally while dollar is rallying he really doesn't like that can it do it yes but for a short period of time so we need this thing to turn into a stupid fake out we are now at 59 we need to come back with the weekly rsi below 58 is it a must yes if the other three factors don't make a move we need some of those at least one or two making a big move causing liquidity to leak into bitcoin so bitcoin can continue pumping after we run out of this short-term incentive notice i call it short term because we've been for f eight months waiting for this to get consumed but now we have already consumed half of it we have the other half in here but at some point we run out of that so we need other incentives i guess you guys get the point we left the order book with 80 million yesterday, 52, 32, and 78. That is a big selling wall located at 77K and going all the way to more or less 80K in the price. And we have the Brownwells selling, but not that much. Let's 
refresh now this and let's see where we are today we just reduced 4 million to 76 63 increase so they're shifting the liquidity higher to above 77 almost at 78 78.9 has 33 and then we have 75.79 at 80k that is slightly less so there are some levels that are shifting away from the price but overall i will say just with finger in the air that the liquidity is starting to reduce on the ask which is above the price obviously and brown wells are now rolling over they're still buying more you know it's still pointing kind of up uptrend is not broken in terms of accumulation from the largest wells of 1 million to 10 million 100k to 1 million but it's kind of rolling over and i think that is kind of expected over the weekend this look to be the limits that we are going to have to be handling with a low volume typical scenario during weekends whether on opening on monday we can break above that and break the bull flag or we see a rejection to the downside we need to wait for that and just like we have here a huge delta of liquidations from futures fair value gaps are also a party for a massive collapse i told you pumps all indicators are going to show us the highest risk ever like for example when we were here with what did we have around here just fair value gaps to the top liquidity calling for coming back there and and taking care of, of all this imbalance in liquidity what did we have below us we have a big vacuum that price needed to go 5000 lower to hit this did they have fuel to move the price there no they couldn't there was just it was just too far in here they had these fair value gaps so fair enough they took them they were gone at this point they were no longer there so there was no liquidity to take here that's why we went for the top level now we have all of these ones to the bottom that is big risk with the caveat that now we have the opportunity to continue going higher and yesterday we closed above the cpr resistance you can see that that level is 76.3 and we closed at 76 6.5 that is great that means that this resistance the liquidity in here has been taken we can still come back down you know like we did at 69 and coming into 65 and yesterday we spot this breakout on the balance sheet from the federal reserve liabilities they've been accumulating and buying bonds from late september and we were paying attention on this move up because every time we move up we face this resistance but that resistance has been broken on the fourth of november November last week and even the Fed during the conference was saying we are still in quantitative tightening but in this channel we don't give an F what they say we care about what we see in charts that's why you're subscribed to this channel we look at charts that's our thing and this chart says that there is a breakout and now I'm tempted to connect my RSI not to the global liquidity index I'm gonna connect it now to the closing price of Resval these are the Federal Reserve liabilities and we're going to focus on the RSI of that. We're going to use this top and using that top, we don't have a breakout, but we could try to assess if we have a local breakout. We don't have it. We have a low quality breakout though in here. So this is a very early sign that they are into something okay they are accumulating they are saying we are in quantitative tightening but by the way we are actually buying and we are letting liquidity enter the system and if you search on twitter for anybody saying we are in quantitative easing no one will say that and neither will i but paying attention to a breakout like this can be very interesting because once we did this in in 2019 in 2020 that's when we started having those big impulsive moves so could this be a fake out sure is it worth paying attention absolutely guys if you want to trade bitcoin or any coin look no further than bybit bybit is an awesome top-notch exchange that i use to trade with bots and manual trading their api in my opinion is the best to connect with trading bots and if you open an account on bybit using my link in the description you can claim up to thirty thousand in rewards subject to trading volume also you get the lowest fees that you can get on bybit as well if you want a hassle free Free exchange then consider bluffing this exchange doesn't require kyc no vpn needed you can withdraw deposit as much as you want you can have as many accounts as you want with different emails to split things and to get all your trading pretty tidy you can trade from anywhere in the world there are no exceptions at the moment and if that wasn't enough you get 10,000 bonus to sign up with my link in the description and the lowest fees as well that you can get on bluffing it's a no-brainer see you in the next one bye bye enjoy your weekend